Hello everyone, Mocha Bear here. Welcome back to Mocha Bear's Hobby Den. Today I will be continuing the factions of Drakenheim from the Dungeons of Drakenheim book by the Dungeon Dudes. Shall we get started? <laughs> Today we will be delving into the Hooded Lanterns. The Hooded Lanterns are an irregular military force drawn up from remnants of the old Drakenheim City Watch and veterans of Westmar Civil War. Led by the Grim Lord Commander Elias Drexel, they wish to drive out the monsters and outlaws who infest the nation's capital and restore the realm of Westmar. Multiple military operations have attempted to retake Drakenheim over the past 15 years. Each has ended in miserable failure, and the contaminated ruins have swallowed thousands of soldiers' lives. What remains of these assaults are merely twisted monsters and undead monstrosities formed from the risen corpses of these regiments. After these disastrous attempts, Drakenheim was left abandoned while civil war ripped Westmar apart instead. These conflicts also ended in vain, with the royal line of House von Kessel undone by fracticide. Westmar is slowly disintegrating into a realm of squabbling fiefdoms, Yet some amongst the fractured nobility hold a glimmer of hope in restoring the nation and rebuilding the capital. Three years ago, they marshaled up the remnants of the Royal Guard, the City Watch, and patriotic veterans of the Civil War to make one last-ditch attempt to retake the city. Although officially dubbed the 4th Provisional Expeditionary Force to reclaim the capital, mouthful, this guerrilla regiment was nicknamed after oil lamps carried by the old City Watch, the Hooded Lanterns. The core members of the Hooded Lanterns are warriors fighting for their homeland. Few honest soldiers survived the Civil War. So many veterans have a life of bloody deeds behind them already. On the other hand, new recruits are seldom old enough to have any strong memories of Drakenheim before it was destroyed. As such, many possess naive and idealistic notions honed into simmering rage and fury at a golden age stolen from them. Under the leadership of Lord Commander Elias Drexel, the Hooded Lanterns have finally broken the losing streak of previous military operations. Rather than making an all-out assault on the ruins, they have taken a methodical approach. After spending nearly a year carefully scouting out the ruins, they began clearing out important fortifications in the city to use as staging grounds for future operations. This strategy has paid off. The Hooded Lanterns have managed to establish countless safe houses and supply caches within the city. They captured Shepherd's Gate and the Drakenheim garrison last year. However, in recent months their efforts have been stymied by sabotage enacted by the Queen of Thieves and the emergence of a horrific Garmir warlord in the inner city known as the Lord of the Feast. While the Hooded Lanterns have imposed the mantle of law and order in the city, these setbacks have revealed their actual authority is limited to their strength of arms. The regiment maintains only a fragile foothold in Drakenheim, and their supply lines are now exceptionally difficult to maintain. It's taking almost everything the Hooded Lanterns have to hold their current position. The Hooded Lanterns are supported by surviving loyal vassals of the royal family who wish to see the old monarchy of Westmar restored. Many of these wealthy nobles lost estates, treasure vaults, family heirlooms, and personal documents when the city was destroyed, and expect the Hooded Lanterns to retrieve them. In return, these noble houses provide soldiers, material, and other supplies to the Hooded Lanterns on a periodic basis, but their financial resources are not inexhaustible. Indeed, the Hooded Lanterns have often resorted to selling delirium themselves to make ends meet. Attire The Hooded Lanterns are a professional military unit. Every member uses standardized equipment. Their uniform consists of a forest green cloak with yellow trim, the traditional colors associated with the Drakenheim coat of arms. They bear the Hooded Lantern symbol on their chest pieces, and shoulder stitches denote their rank and company. Scout units wear light armor and often wield long swords, short swords, and long bows. Guard units are equipped with chainmail, shields, spears, and crossbows. Each member also wears a metal chain with an inscribed plate bearing their name, hometown, and next of kin. Most Hooded Lanterns cut their hair when they sign up, but since many spend weeks at a time fighting, they end up a disheveled mess by the end of their assignments. Strongholds The Hooded Lanterns hold three key positions in Drakenheim and its environs, the Emberwood Watchtower, Shepherd's Gate, and the Drakenheim Garrison. They have converted the stockade beneath the garrison into a bunker insulated from the haze. Beyond these key locations, the Hooded Lanterns have several minor bases and old cottages and watchtowers a few days outside the city where their soldiers rest and recuperate after being posted in the ruins. Objectives Restore Drakenheim 
The patriotic warriors of the Hooded Lanterns desperately want to rebuild their former home. The rank-and-file soldiers fight a guerrilla war to reclaim Drakenheim street by street, slaying monsters, driving out outlaws, and arresting scavengers. Lord Commander Elias Drexel plans on establishing strongholds at key sites of strategic importance. The city gates, St. Selina's Monastery, St. Vitruvio's Cathedral, the Clock Tower, and eventually, Castle Draken. Thus far, the Hooded Lanterns have only succeeded in taking Shepherd's Gate and the Drakenheim Garrison. Obtain the Seals of Drakenheim. The ruling council of Westmar wore enchanted badges of office attuned to magical defenses and arcane wards that once protected Drakenheim, and also served as the keys to the Castle Drakenheim itself. Known as the Seals of Drakenheim, all are lost within the ruins save the Lord Commander's badge, carried by Elias Drexel himself. Until all seals are assembled, the city's magical defenses are subject to the chaotic whims of the haze. The Hooded Lanterns are constantly searching the ruins for any sign or clue of the whereabouts of these items. Unfortunately, several are already in the hands of rival factions. See Appendix D for these game statistics, which I will do in a future episode. Reestablish a rightful monarchy. Many Hooded Lanterns hope a legitimate heir to the throne still survives somewhere. Others believe that even if House Von Kessel is truly extinct, a new monarchy could be formed by a prominent noble house with some connection to the royal line. Both St. Vitruvio's Cathedral and Castle Draken are believed to contain archives detailing the line of succession and magically preserve vials of royal blood that can be used in a special ritual to confirm legitimate royal ancestry. A potential claimant with access to these documents could galvanize the support needed to ascend to the throne. However, proof of royal ancestry alone is not enough. Any claim is Suprius at best without the Seals of Drakenheim, the Crown of Westmar, and Castle Draken. Even a true heir to House von Kessel will have immense difficulty holding the realm of Westmar together without these keys to power. Key Characters I will go over in more detail on these key characters, like all the other factions, in a future video. Boons Supply Caches The Hooded Lanterns have hidden stockpiles of supplies in the city for emergencies. They'll teach characters how to find them quickly. Each contains 1d6 potions of healing or restorative ointment, healer's kits, ammunition, specially preserved rations, and the location is usually a safe place to take a short rest. Green Cloaks The Hooded Lanterns offer each character either a cloak of elven kind or a cloak of protection bearing the insignia of the Hooded Lanterns. Armory As a reward for completing an important mission, the Hooded Lanterns grant the party one magical weapon from their armory. This will be an uncommon magic weapon for an outer city mission, a rare magic weapon for the inner city or a faction stronghold, or a very rare magic weapon for a successful mission to Castle Draken or the Cathedral. The Hooded Lanterns will grant this boon once per player character. Call for aid. The Hooded Lanterns give the characters a flare gun and a horn that can be used as an action to summon emergency help. When used, help arrives 10 or 3d6 minutes later in the form of a randomly determined Hooded Lantern strike team. Player characters who call for help recklessly or without appropriate need lose this boon. Intelligence Reports No one knows the layout and the defenses of Drakenheim better than the Hooded Lanterns. If asked, the Hooded Lanterns can provide detailed descriptions, directions, and information on the prominent structures in the city, maps of the city streets and public buildings, as well as information about the movements of known monster groups and other factions in Drakenheim. Urban Survival Training Characters can spend one month training with veteran Hooded Lantern soldiers to gain one of the following. Ability score improvement or a new feat. Strike Teams The Hooded Lanterns are urban guerrilla fighters honed by training, discipline, and experience. Their combat doctrine emphasizes organized teamwork, scouting ahead, stealth ambushes, hit-and-run tactics, seizing elevated ground, and heavy use of ranged attacks and traps. Once engaged, squads communicate using whistles, code signs, signal flares, and horn calls to execute complex and practice maneuvers. While the Hooded Lanterns don't have access to much magic, they've prepared to fight spellcasters in battle. They know much about the monsters they fight on a regular basis, and they always confirm their kills. The Hooded Lanterns know the layout of the city streets well, and stash caches of healing potions and emergency supplies throughout the city and I will go into more detail on these strike teams and a strike team video in the future. Schemes Search and Seizures A squad of hooded lanterns confront the characters and demand the characters turn over their equipment and vacate the city immediately. If they are seen again, they will be brought to justice. Blockade The hooded lanterns forbid characters from entering the city via Shepherd's Gate. They step up patrols around the other gates to block characters from using them. 
Stalkers, a hooded lantern strike team tails the characters as they move through the streets. They assault the characters after they are weakened by a difficult encounter and attempt to arrest them. Wanted, a series of wanted posters are put up around Emberwood Village with a reward for bringing the characters to justice. This draws the attention of Queensmen bounty hunters as well as rival adventurers and anyone else keen to make money to bring the characters to justice. Deadly Ambush the Hooded Lanterns set up extensive traps down a city street and lure characters into a deadly ambush where two strike teams await on rooftops and in covered windows to surprise the characters. They attempt to encircle the characters in a pincer maneuver. Crown Authority The Hooded Lanterns banish the characters from Emberwood Village. Local merchants refuse to do business with the characters as a result, and the characters won't be allowed to stay at any of the inns or taverns. The Hooded Lanterns place additional patrols in Emberwood Village at the Watchtower and Caravan Court to drive out the characters when they come into town. Strange Bedfellows In desperate situations, the Hooded Lanterns ally themselves with another faction who also has made an enemy of the player characters. Execution Sentence The Hooded Lanterns orchestrate a deadly plan to draw the characters into battle against the Executioner of Slaughterstone Square. They blockade the roads and take positions on the roofs, preventing the characters from escaping the square while the Executioner kills them. Damn, that's dark. Interesting faction. I might have to run them or something similar in my current campaign I'm running. Well, I hope you found that entertaining and informative and potentially giving you inspiration to create a group like this or to use them yourself in your own campaigns. And I apologize for the big gap between these faction videos. Every time I go to do one, uh, Kickstarter projects arrived and I do an unboxing video. So please bear with me and thank you for your patience as well as your continued support. But that is it for today. So please take care of yourselves, and until next time, hobby on.